this is a young individual who had imbalance as well as visual blurring. I'm showing a T1 weighted scan in the sagittal plane without contrast and a T2 weighted scan. What would you say is the best diagnosis for this case? Would you call this Vermian atrophy, Joubert syndrome, Dandy Walker syndrome, Miller Diker syndrome, or Miller Light syndrome? <laughs> Let's start the uh, timer rolling and hand out the beers and see what people say here. Vermian atrophy, Joubert syndrome, Dandy Walker syndrome, Miller Diker syndrome, or Miller Light syndrome. Okay, so we'll uh, see what the audience says. Well, that's outstanding. I mean, this is a uh, sort of a classic molar tooth deformity, which is seen in Joubert syndrome. I'm very pleased to see that 74% of the audience got that right. Actually, with the with the MOC type of thing, and we're not again, we're not doing stump the stars. I like to see around a 70% correct answer rate. So that's very good. Stump the stars. I would hope to get about 40% correct. So Joubert syndrome is autosomal recessive. The patients present with hypotonia, usually at an age younger than what you're seeing in this particular case. Uh, the individuals have developmental delay, motor, motor delay, as well as an abnormal breathing pattern often with, associated with nystagmus. They may have poly or syndactyly. They may have colobomas and or renal cysts. The findings include vermian atrophy. In that case, they are, it is an entity that has that common finding with Dandy Walker syndrome. However, what one sees is this molar tooth appearance of the superior cerebellar peduncles in association with this dilated upper fourth ventricle region and associated with the vermian atrophy. Um, people say that the, if you measure the midbrain pons anterior posterior isthmus that this is markedly reduced in, in an anterior posterior direction as well, which is another of the findings that's suggestive of Joubert syndrome. When we look at the report by Patel and Barkovich of posterior fossa uh, syndromes or malformations in 2002, they listed Joubert syndrome as number two after what they call the Dandy Walker continuum. And I like using this term continuum because frankly for me, Sometimes it's difficult to distinguish between the full Dandy Walker complex versus Dandy Walker variant. And so using the, being able to use the term the Dandy Walker continuum, I think, is a nice uh, hedge. <laughs> um, the other things that may cause cerebellar malformations include some of these muscular dystrophies, which include your Fukuyama's uh, congenital muscular dystrophy, as well as your Walker-Warburg, or your isolated muscular dystrophies, all of which, can, again, can cause cerebellar malformations. One of the uh, peculiar entities that we often talk about with fusion of the cerebellar hemispheres across the midline in absence of separation is this entity of Raman cephalosynapsis. Um, another thing that can cause cerebellar malformation is CMB infection, usually with diffuse um, volume loss and or hypoplasia. When one has a case like this, it's pretty classic for your Dandy Walker syndrome with a huge cyst that is communicating with the fourth ventricle, really don't have very much in the way of an inferior vermis whatsoever in this case, and notice the finding of elevation of the torcula above the lambdoid suture. And at least in the article by Patel and Barkovich, they use the elevation of the torcula um, as one of the major criteria of distinguishing between full Dandy Walker complex versus Dandy Walker variant where you may have the cyst but without necessarily elevation of the torcula. And on the axial T2A scan, nice demonstration of the communication with the fourth ventricle. In the Walker syndrome, uh, part and parcel is the inferior vermian aplasia or hypoplasia. You have your posterior fossa cysts. You may have cerebellar hemispheric involvement. And as I said, torcular lambdoid inversion. This is a patient who has an arachnoid cyst. You have a cyst that's not communicating with the fourth ventricle. You do see elevation of the torcula. But this is clearly not communicating with the fourth ventricle. We see a normal inferior vermis. This is a merely an arachnoid cyst in the posterior fossa. This, on the other hand, is a patient who may have elements of inferior vermin hypoplasia, some communication of CSF with the fourth ventricle. And as you can see here, when we put contrast in, this is communicating with the uh, subarachnoid space. 
I mentioned Miller-Dyker syndrome. Miller-Dyker syndrome is a totally different entity. It's your classic lysencephaly type 1 with agyria or pachygyria. The patients may have microcephaly, mental retardation, growth retardation, as well as facial dysmorphism within the hypoplastic pons and olivary heterotopia. And this is due to a deletion in the 17th chromosome. And they classically have the figure of agyria. Well, at this point, uh, time has run out. I'm just going to briefly go through this patient who has a bright signal intensity in the um, basal ganglia structures. And this was an individual who had hepatic encephalopathy and uh, was a transplant patient who was on hyperalimentation and it's a cause for the bright signal intensity of T1-weighted scan. And this is thought to be related to manganese dysmetabolism. Causes of bright signal include the, the following, iron, hemorrhage, manganese, calcium, or unknown. And as you can see, with each of these, you have different entities that may be causing this. So I'd like to just summarize what we've seen here. We've seen inflammatory lesions, including Bell's palsy, as well as cryptococcus. We saw a neoplasm, choroid plexus papilloma in the fourth ventricle. We saw some degenerative disorders, which will include hereditary olivary degeneration as well as CJD. You saw a congenital abnormality, which included Joubert. I briefly went through hepatic encephalopathy as a cause of bilateral bright signal intensity on T1-weighted scan. And then we saw some vascular lesions, including the arteriovenous malformation and ADEM. And that is what you pretty much can expect to see at the MOC, a wide variety 